Um, <laughs> uh, we are we are here tonight. <laughs> we are buzzing for this show. Yeah. Oh, please. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is a live call-in show. No interviews tonight. Just you and us, right? It's us. 1-800-930-2819. However, go over to facebook.com transformation talk radio because Jacob will be able to kind of watch you over there. I think maybe even Daniel's here. But yeah, this is, we're connecting. We have to connect. So what bee do you have in your bonnet, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the bee I got my bonnet is about bees themselves. And the reason that um, we picked this, this topic, we have got two a topics. bee in your bonnet, we have two topics, mm -hmm. but got a bee in your bonnet is tomorrow, May 20th, is World Bee Day. And I've always been an environmentalist. I've been a landscaper. Um, you know, I like to garden. Uh, you know, I like my, my hands in the earth. And in the past decade, there's been an alarming decrease globally of bees. And this is catastrophic. Uh, Albert Einstein theorized that if bees went extinct, human beings might oh. last four years. And recent scientists say that that is most likely true. Um, bees are so important. They pollinate over 70% of the world's crops, avocado, uh, bananas, corn, uh, essential crops. They're the only insect which produces a food for humans, which is honey. And bees also produce propolis, which is a natural antibiotic. And so, yes, there are people who are allergic to bee stings, and, and that can be extremely um, life-threatening. But overall, life as we know it on this planet cannot exist without bees. And it's due to deforestation. It's due to pesticides. So if you have bees in your yard or, you know, you can plant some flowering plants, yeah. we can all do something. You know, um, yeah. Dr. Pat, uh, Morgan Freeman, you know, the, the film icon, what he does is he buys up lots of vacant property and puts beehives on them, you know, and it's, it's like, um, and Elon Musk, if you're listening, please don't waste $44 billion on buying Twitter, buy land, put bees on it. Okay. So I have to put in, put in Elon my Musk, there. I got a whole lot of other things to say to you, but we're not going to do it today. <laughs> no, no. But the thing is, the thing is, um, uh, we can make the changes. People can do things like, you know, where, where I've uh, grown up in Florida, whenever you go by orange groves or grapefruit or lemon, there's always beehives there, you know, because, uh, you know, the farmers, you know, they know that, that they have to that have the bees pollinate. So um, it's important that there is a World Bee Day. It's important that people are aware of this. And even more importantly, that we take some action for it. So, um, you know, so that's the bee in my bonnet is that we have to yeah. protect bees. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know one of the things too today is that's one of the things that's on our list for us to talk about. But, you know, today also represents, you know, some other things that have happened in the world, some other things that are happening in the world now. And um, I think it's important to have a conversation for a minute about, you know, when we're talking about HIV and we're talking yeah. about AIDS and the level of awareness and what today represents. I, people have asked me, you've been so, you've been through a lot in your life, Pat, but what are some of the things that you can point to that were really the most challenging? And there are a couple of answers to that question, but I will tell you, in all the things that I protested about growing up, all the marches, myself, my mom, all of us did. The one that I felt the most helpless and hopeless about, and thank you, Louise Hay, was being on the East Coast and watching my friends die. Watching mostly mostly gay men, but it wasn't all gay men, right? There are a lot of other people, but watching people not just die, but watching people not even, not even be cared for. You yeah. see, it's not just that we've lost so many, 
the atrocity that happened in that arena around care, right? I often wonder if that was not a gay population, would we have treated them that way? And then I got my answer, COVID, because COVID comes along and we're not treating people that way. Albeit, we've had to have some restrictions, but we didn't treat people like they were pariah. And I remember, I remember being in New York and just screaming at Ed Koch. And it was one of those moments in my life where I didn't realize that we were doing something, right? We actually were doing something. I hope we've learned from that. I hope we've learned that people are people, human beings are human beings. Absolutely. And, you know, HIV was, was a pandemic. Um, and I remember when, when I was practicing law, um, I had a client that I had to go to the hospital where he was dying of HIV and get him to sign uh, papers. And it was, you know, and, and I had to, you know, I did my research and I realized like you can't catch it from, you know, from uh, just being in the same room with somebody and, and all that. And I remember this client as sort of a robust role, you know, like you know, happy go lucky guy and just seeing him in this emaciated uh, uh, state, it was, it was really difficult. And um, my mentor, one of my mentors, Father Sonny, and I, I quote Father Sonny in my first book, um, Never Letting Go. Father Sonny was a, a, a Catholic priest who was a member of the La Salette Order. And he was a trailblazer in caring for HIV victims. And he bucked the, the position at the time of the Catholic Church because they were saying, well, you know, these people are immoral. And I remember Sonny said, these people are dying and nobody cares about them. And that is why we went into the clergy is to show compassion. And he set up the first HIV wow. mission in Central Florida. Wow. And, wow. and yeah, you know, so, so Father Sonny, I know you're in the light. Thank you. Thank you. He, he, he passed on. That was such a sad day um, when Father Sonny transitioned, but um, he made such a great difference in, in the world. Yeah. There's so many reflections of, of, of things right now. Um, you know, we're coming off the heels of some states which had an election and had elections. And, you know, there's a lot on people's minds. And what I really, what I really am liking, Mark, is I'm really liking people getting engaged again. And it doesn't matter what side of the coin you're on, people are coming out and getting engaged again. They're really yeah. looking at things. They're really asking yeah. different questions. And I think that's why you and I do this show is because we are here to help people where they are looking for some guidance. Now we're right. gonna go to the phones for those of you out there. I uh, just want to say 1-800-930-2819. Why don't we hop over and take a call? What do you think? Absolutely. All right, Jacob. Hey. hey Jacob. <laughs> uh, we've got Sasha calling in from Georgia. All right, let's do it. Hey there, Sasha. Can you hear us? Hi, Sasha. Can you hear us? Hi, I'm here. Hi, Mark. Hi, Dr. Pat. Hey, hey. Sasha. How can we help you today? Hey. Um, I wanted to know if anyone from the other side wants to tell me something. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. All right. I'm getting a, hold on. One, two, three, four. Wow. You got a lot of folks lining up, but we're just going to do um, uh, just maybe one spirit. Let's see. All right. I'm getting a female energy coming through. And this lady was elderly when she passed. And it's, it's interesting because I see her kind of wearing a, a hat. I know we're talking about being her bonnet, but what I get from this is this woman seemed like she may have had a very fair complexion. So she needed uh, to either stay out of the sun or if she was in the sun, she needed that protection because I'm getting sort of a reddish tint to her skin, which indicates that she's the type of person that if she went out in the sun, she would burn instead of bronze. Um, and um, what I get about her is this, um, I'm getting like a droopiness 
uh, droopy sensation on, on uh, one side of my face, on the right side of my face, I'm feeling that sensation. That indicates to me that she very well may have had a stroke. Um, I'm ruling out a heart attack because that would be the left side, but I'm getting on the right side. Um, and the interesting thing, Sasha, is it feels like she may have had a history of this and um, that it took some time for her to pass. Do you recognize this person? Sasha. Okay, you try again. Uh, yeah, I'm you're breaking up right there. You, yeah, you need a clearer connection, Sasha. Say it again, Sasha. I think it could be my grandma. Okay. All right. Um, hold on. Let's see what she wants you to know. Okay. Cool. She said, she said, put the brakes on your spending. Put the brakes on your spending. Put the brakes on your spending. Dr. Pat, what do you think that could mean? <laughs> spending is an interesting word. Yes. And what I think about with spending is whenever, uh, Sasha, can I ask you a question? Sasha? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. There was something on your mind before you called into the show. It was something, something. I have, I have been spending a lot. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, you know, a lot of times when we get a call like this, right? And Mark really taps and tunes right in. You know, there's a question like, what do they want to tell me? And then they tell you what you absolutely don't want them to tell you, right? <laughs> Sasha? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I, I mean, yeah. now you know this. Uh, I'm not somebody to say stop spending. What I say is use discernment. Yeah. Um, you know, people have been, for the past three years, really been in a box. And so people are buying things for themselves that they wouldn't ordinarily buy, but they're not buying above their means, right? So you don't want to start buying oh, above yeah. your means, right? Like I have a friend that just got like a Range Rover deal. Like that's like a, I will not go buy a Range Rover, right? But I may start to look at something that's a little bit more comfortable, than what I'm in. So are, are you able to do that and make that adjustment? Yes. Okay. So there is still something very specific to you. There's something. This, you got to be in your bonnet about something. Did something happen around this? Did somebody say something to you? Did somebody say you're spending too much money? What, what happened for you to even be thinking about this? I really want to know that. Um, well, I'm going on a trip and um, I'm, I was, you know, wasting a lot of money buying a lot of clothes for me and the kids and I have wasted a lot of money, spend a lot. Okay. I, I don't, I don't hear wasting. Wait, help me out. I'm going on a trip and I've been spending like money I on have, the kids. I have spent. I have spent a lot of money buying unnecessary things. For the kids or for you? For me and for them also. Stuff that okay. we really don't need. Okay. See, I love this. I don't have enough time to really get into this with you. There's only one question. So if you could take the word need out, of your bonnet, just get rid of the word need. We really don't need. There's a question, are you spending above and beyond, right? What you're taking in. That's yeah. really the question. If you're doing that, that's what you need to address. So there's two things I want you to shift. Stop talking about I'm buying stuff that I don't need. Stop that for a minute. Cause that's not really the issue. The issue is I just bought a $100,000 car, not you, but I'm just saying, I just bought a $100,000 car. Really? I'm not living in it. I don't really have that kind of job. What was I thinking? So you see the difference? Yeah. So Mark is saying, stop spending beyond what you actually are bringing in. You got that? 
That's all. Yeah, it's it's do. really mm-hmm. yeah. You you don't have to stop spending, Mark. You know what I'm trying to say, Mark? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because you know that's what her grandmother came right out. And you know, Doctor Pat, I like what you said that you know when we we make connections uh, to the other side. A lot of times, people want to hear what they want to hear, or they want advice on a particular thing. And in this case, her grandma went to put the brakes on your spending, put the brakes on your spending, put the brakes on your spending. I mean, that kept getting repeated. And the other side, what I call the afterlife frequency, knows what you need, not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And and this is in harmony with, with the advice, Sasha, that Dr. Pat's giving you, is that your spending has to be in harmony with your means. You know, because spending... Um, you know, sometimes spending money sometimes makes people, they feel good. You know, you go out and you buy yourself something and you enjoy it and all that, but it can also be an addiction uh, as well. Um, you know, Dr. Pat, isn't there something like a shoppers anonymous or something? Yeah, there like is. People? Yeah. yeah. But I got to tell you, Sasha, I'm not getting that for you. Um, I understand that, you know, what you're doing is you care for your children. You're really good. This is really just Sasha. So, you know, you're not alone right now in doing this. Millions of people are doing it. They have felt so cut off in so many ways. So are you okay, Sasha, to reconcile this and know you have not done anything wrong, just saying, and that you're going to really step back and catch up on whatever your payments are. And then once you're caught up, then you start over. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that sound like a game plan for you? And, and by the uh, way, you, you, yeah, your grandma told you to do it anyway, so you got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sasha. Thank you for calling in. Thank you so much. And, um, go ahead, oh, Mark. Yeah, and Sasha, since you already spent the money on the vacation, have a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't let dr pat and i be a buzzkill <laughs> yeah no if you've already spent the money on the vacation that i'm telling you vacations right now for people that is considered a mental health event so, you know yeah that that's yeah. a really good yeah that's a really good point dr pat yeah. because you know how many people when they're laying on their deathbed say if only i'd bought more things but i don't think people regret you know going on vacations, having life enriching experiences, encountering new people, new ideas, new cultures. Uh, I don't think too many people, um, I don't think anyone ever really regrets that, you know, unless you're neglecting your family, you know, when you're doing that. But, but the thing is, um, what makes life happy, and I get this from spirits Mm -hmm. all the time, is not the amount of material objects that we acquire, But, you know, looking back on a lifetime where the happy, the life enriching events outnumbered the negative ones. Yeah, I love it. I agree. Uh, Jacob, why don't we go to a short break? And then when we come back, we'll go back to the phones, right? How does that sound to everybody? Jacob, why don't you take us out? We'll be right back, everybody. Welcome back to The Psychic and the Doc. I'm Mark Anthony, The Psychic, and I'm with my amazing co-host, world-famous, world-renowned behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Basili. We're taking your calls, 1-800-930-2819. We're talking about a number of things uh, in this show. Tomorrow's World Bee Day, and uh, we're talking about how bees Our buzzy little friends are essential to the survival of life on earth. And on the break, we're talking about, you know, bees, not only do they produce honey, you know, bees are the only insects that produce a food for humans, but there's also bee pollen and a substance they produce called propolis, which is a natural antibiotic. Now, Dr. Pat and I are not prescribing or telling anybody to start taking bee pollen or propolis. That's something you would have to check with your healthcare provider. But uh, that's something to be aware of. And I know that a lot of holistic uh, healers and naturopathic yep. uh, physicians um, may, may recommend those products. Yep. Um, you know, because we've all been dealing uh, with, you know, with COVID, with flus, with, with all types of things. 
And, you know, when we think about bees, you know, when I was a little kid, you know, you know, bees, you had to watch out for you. You didn't want them to sting you. Then you hear about the killer bees and, and all these things. And then we realized that, you know, it's neat watching them, them pollinate. I mean, uh, when they go to flower to flower. And one of the things about bees, they will, will only go to a particular type of plant on one day. So one day the hive wow. may just go to black eyed Susans. Then no the next kidding. day, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. Then the next day they may just go to roses, you know, so, so, and they're very, very organized. Um, you know, it's no pun intended. It's like a hive mind. There appears to be some form of intelligence or something which, you know, they're all programmed and, and designated and then they work in harmony. And uh, bees will leave you alone unless they perceive you as a threat. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Dr. Pat, I know that uh, you like you like the great outdoors and um, I, I, I do too. I, I was hiking in a nature preserve in Florida and, and I'm not making fun of people from New York, okay? But I yeah. can hear- Yeah, I'm from people. New York. Hello, okay. just, just well, want to tell you. Well, yeah, my family okay. comes from there too, but I could hear these people a mile away. Okay. And when you're in the woods going like, ah, you know, is not really the way <laughs> to do it. You know, attracting attention in a jungle isn't great. And these people, I could tell they're from the city and they're like, oh, I can't say that. You know, they're in, and the woman, uh, there's two women and they're the guys and they were wearing high heels and they're like, oh, I hate Florida. And the bugs are, oh, the bugs are all over. Well, they were drenched, <laughs> they were drenched in perfume. I could smell it like 20 feet away. And they're like, oh, these are, I said, well, it's your, it's your perfume. And they look at me, what? And I said, you know, you don't go into the woods smelling like flowers and not expect to be covered, <laughs> covered in, in, and, and then they stopped and they listened to me and they said, well, we're not familiar with this, you know, and the All thing right, is, there you, like, go. you know, yeah, yeah, when you're out of, you know, your environment, I said, well, when you go into the woods, first off, and I said, no offense, but you got to keep your voice down, okay, because if you do want to see things, you're scaring everything away. <laughs> Secondly, you need to have proper shoes on, okay, high heels, in, on a, in a, in a, a hike in a, a forest in central Florida, it doesn't cut it. And third, no perfumes, no colognes, because all you're going to do is attract insects. And Florida is not a place oh. where you need to be attracting insects. <laughs> so um, I just thought I'd, I'd share that. But, but it, it's funny. Um, it, it's funny when you encounter people that are literally a fish out of water. It's like me being in a, a snowy environment. You know, this, I mean, I've been in them, but that's not, you know, something that I, that I grew up in. Well, I love that we're sharing this because, you know, I could see you doing that. I could see Linda doing something like that. But what I love is that you've opened up a dialogue and that's what's important. And we're doing that now on the show. Live call in 1-800-930-2819. Jacob, we're going to kick it back to you. Yep, sounds good. We've got Susan calling in from Saskatchewan. How's it going, Susan? Hi, Susan. Oh, hi there. Yeah, I, um, you can, can you hear me okay? Uh, loud and clear. You're coming through very okay. well, Susan. <laughs> yeah, I am loud. <laughs> no, 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 no I didn't mean that like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Loud and clear no, is good no, no, on the radio, it's just fine. not in no, the I'm glad that we can connect so clearly. I actually uh, was fortunate enough to uh, to speak to both of you. And hi, Mark. Hi, Dr. Pat. Hi. Um, yeah, it was two or, three, two or three weeks ago. And you might not remember me. We only chatted for just a few minutes at the end of the show. Um, but um, it was very remarkable what both of you, um, you know, discussed with me. And... I just wanted to tell you that everything that you said happened wow. and the wow. reading that Mark, you know, came through with my son, it was fascinating. And wow. um, I, I have transformed um, so much in just, well, since I've talked to you, but ever since my son passed away last February, um, I have been on this incredible journey and I have been in spiritual all my life, but I've never delved into what I've been, you know, delving into uh, since my son passed. Wow. And um, I am on, like I say, this in incredible awakening 
and like the doors have just flown open for me um, to I'm not sure what, and this is kind of what my question to both of you because sure, sure. I, I, I'm so uh, uh, blessed and I have so much gratitude for how I'm feeling right now um, because I am by far the uh, happiest, most peaceful, um, uh, you know, person that I've been in my entire life. And I have had an extremely hellish life. And now it all makes sense to me. And from the time I get up now to the time I go to bed, and this has just been increasing for months and just totally took off the last two, three weeks. You know, I am, you know, I've had readings with various mediums, um, read all of your books, Mark, and um, several other mediums, you know. Oh yeah, you're welcome. I just just loved it. I give them away actually, <laughs> and well, thank um, you. you know, I just <laughs> yeah, no problem. I I love to do it. I I I just want to share um, my my mm-hmm. excitement and my passion for realizing what is really going on here uh, on our planet, and and I know that we're uh, you know spirits having a human experience and. I, I'm just so fortunate to be able to connect and, and, you know, with my son so mm. much. He was an introvert. And I, he's connecting with me all the time. And it just goes beyond that. But I cro- I'm mm. crossing paths like, like every day now. It was just, you know, it's going so fast. I'm just wondering, oh, what am I meant to do next? Because I can't really relate to the average person now. And I don't even want to tell them all these things that are happening and people I'm meeting and what they're saying and um, the, the signs that I'm, you know, getting and it, it, it's fabulous. And I am, um, I, I'm just kind of in a new chapter of my life right okay. now. And, uh, you know, and I have a granddaughter named Sunny. I heard you talk about Sunny and, you know, she's almost two and she's the love of my life. And that's why I'm here in Saskatoon. And um, I am moving, uh, Mark and Pat. Just I was the one fretting about yes, moving yes, and panicking. Yes. And it I remember. Just, just totally worked out, Pat. Yep, yep. It, <laughs> it couldn't have gone any better. It was just a miracle. And I worked hard at it. And I took your advice, you know, and threw away the fear. And just, uh, and Mark yeah. also mentioned, you know, my son and the candle and the illumination and all that. And, you know, it just, it all made sense to me. And, um, yeah. And I mean, that seems like a year or two ago, because I'm telling you, I'm, (laughs) I'm just so pumped up now that there's just not enough time in the day for me. Whereas, you know, the the last recent years I was on disability and I couldn't get back to work and the days just dragged on. I didn't know what to do with myself. I'm just like, Oh, uh, uh, Susan, so I'm just. I mean, Susan, Susan, Susan I'm sorry. Susan, yeah, we're going to jump in here. I'm going to go before Mark because I have one thing to say, and then. Well, hold and on, then, I'm getting, I'm getting oh, something got, from the other side. Oh, you got, you got somebody? Side. Okay, yeah, go, Mark. Yeah, um, Susan, I keep tasting peppermint. Peppermint. Oh. Now, peppermint, peppermint can mean a lot of. Okay, that can mean you love peppermint, hate peppermint. I associate <laughs> peppermint with December, so that could be a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to you or someone close to you in this world or the other side in December. It could also be a trigger for a name like Pat, Patrick, or Patricia. Now, obviously, we have Dr. Pat here, but I don't think they're talking about her. The, what does peppermint mean to you, or is there a significance to December other than ho, 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 we like Christmas? Uh, and are you saying December, Mark, or September? Uh, peppermint. Peppermint, peppermint really. December. Yeah, can't yeah. Pe- peppermint, but was it the month of uh, December or September? December, D-E-C-E-M-B-E-R, Christmas time. Ho, ho, Number ho, 12. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, well pe- what peppermint means to me is um, uh, herbal tea. I love okay. peppermint herbal tea. All right, there we go. Digestion and hold on, hold on, uh, Susan. Your son's making contact. See, he what? (laughs) Never mind what he's doing. Let me let me work with this a little bit more. Um, Hold on. Interesting. He keeps um, now. I'm tasting oranges and seeing. Are you eating a lot of oranges, or is there something with you and oranges, orange juice, and or potassium? Because I feel like I'm just like 
tearing apart a big navel orange and just eating the orange? Um, well, it's... Uh connected with oranges i have somehow <laughs> gotten my um my system very acidic uh to the point of that uh my my tongue has been in a lot of pain and mm. uh it, it it just feels very acidy um not specific to oranges mm. but uh something's going on there with okay. um acid it my up yeah okay so certainly this means you're going to have to start heading in the alkalized direction. Um, and, you know, believe mm -hmm. it or not, lemons alkalize. Thank oranges, you. Yeah, oranges don't oh. because of the high sugar content. But lemons, if you drink like fresh squeezed lemon in your water, which you should every morning, it will begin to alkalize your body. And it's good for you for a lot of reasons. So your son's bringing this up. What's interesting about the peppermint and you're drinking peppermint tea, that also um, calms your stomach down and it helps to control uh, headaches, in particular migraines. So your son's tran um, transmitting this information. So I'll leave that with you and Dr. Pat. I know that you have something. I, I really do. In a word. And by the way, all of you that are waiting to call in, we're not going to take any more breaks, so don't worry. So can you imagine being me for a minute? No, nobody can. So let me take that back. That's just like a weird visual. But my <laughs> life, uh, here's the thing. You go to school for 10 years, you get awards for all of this great business research. You know, consulting firms want to hire you and you want to throw up. Now. I was fortunate to, enough to have the insight and get some guidance like for Mark, right? Just like you did. And it didn't take me a lot, just like it didn't take you a lot because you are open, you are clear. So here's the mistake I made, but it's not really a mistake. I created something called crust busting, which I love and it is coming back. However, I started to talk about how the show, I dialed a wrong phone in. I heard a voice, I saw a vision. My friends were like, number one, you're paying for airtime and you could be making 250 grand a year if there's something wrong with you. That was number one. Number two was, holy cow, she's like talking to people that are not there. So what I learned was the word discernment. What that means yeah. is yep. don't stop being you. I never stopped. And then what happened was this became a forum and I've had to grow into this. I'm just going to say who you're seeing now. I was sick for 10 years when I was doing this show. Nobody knew I was in pain, but I couldn't get a real job. So here's what I want to say. You're going to keep calling in. You're going to start taking a journal and you're not going to dismiss any idea you get. And when you get your list together, post-it notes, chewing gum, I don't care what you do, you're going to call in and I'm going to give you a way for you to email that to me and I'm going to help you. Oh, that is wonderful, Pat. Yeah. Oh, don't I, I'm change. speechless. Don't change, right? Because Mark did the hard part. I'm going to help you with the other part. <laughs> don't change well, I love who it. you are, yeah. okay? But I mean, I made yeah, the mistake I, of yep. talking to a priest and just what I said to the priest, he was like, yeah, you should like go to Harborview or something. But what I'm telling mm -hmm. you is don't change. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we're going to send you off. With. Yeah, and, want, yep. You have to do it. I just 14. wanted to tell you, I just wanted to, to say one thing before Please we're sure. done, because I can't hear you too clearly, Pat, but I know if I listen to the, um, the, the, the blog or whatever i i can the podcast okay. i can hear it clearly then so i'll re-listen to this but uh what mark said about uh the lemons and and my son or the citrus um the other day i was shopping and i just couldn't resist buying a bag of lemons and i haven't do done that in years and i yeah. thought okay i'm gonna cut them up put them in ice yeah. water and because yeah. uh, i love that when i'm in a restaurant but uh, right. just so here's awesome. when you have to hear hear what i, I gotta finish because we gotta go I, I took off my headset. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Now? We'll be in touch. Bye. Oh, okay.
Okay, next caller. <laughs> um, Jacob, I'm not sure what's happening with my line, but I will make sure for all of you, I promise to fix it. But can Jacob, can you hear me okay like this? Yeah, this works. All right, let's go to the phones. Because Susan, I got to tell you one thing. You have to take 14 days to do that list I told you. All right, Jacob, it's all you. Uh, yeah, we've got Jessica calling in from Texas right now. Hi there, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. What part of Texas? I'm in Arlington near Dallas. Cool. Howdy. How can we help you today? <laughs> well, um, I've been listening to you for quite a while and just got the guts to call in. <laughs> um, just wanted to see if you have any, uh, any of my loved ones would like to talk to me. Uh, the beef yeah, yeah. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold, hold, hold on, stop, stop talking, <laughs> hold on, okay, I got a male energy coming, sorry, I don't mean to do that, but as soon as you say that, I'm getting a male energy coming through, connected to you, and he feels connected to you through your dad's side of the family, so this is a connection to your male side of the family, and what I've got with this guy is I'm feeling this weird sensation in my throat, it feels like my lymph glands are swollen, um, real, real pain in the throat. I'm also feeling pressure build up in the chest. Um, now, the, the pain in the throat, um, this could be a cancerous condition because I'm feeling nauseated and sick, which are one of my cancer indicators. And then with his chest, I feel like my, my lungs are on fire and I'm feeling pressure and fluid build up in the chest. Now, obviously, that can be something like a pneumonia, but but pneumonia and um, like uh, lung cancer uh, and congestive heart failure, all of them, I feel it, it feels very similar because I get this pressure buildup, but it's the, the, the problem in the lymph glands that I'm getting um, and the dizzy disorientation prior to passing and the nausea. Does any of this, I'm, and sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but he came in like a lightning bolt. Uh, does this make any sense to you, Jessica? Yeah. It, it does. Okay. What's his relationship? Don't give me his name. Um, well, there's more than one person, I believe, that had heart failure in my family. Okay. That, that's fine. That's fine. But is there somebody that, that had uh, cancer? That, that's what I'm feeling very heavily with this guy. Okay. Okay. So it could be my grandfather. Okay. Is that your dad's dad? No, I, I, that's the thing. I do believe that's my mother's uh, father. Yeah, I'm really getting someone very heavily on your dad's side of the family. Um, don't worry about okay. that just yet. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, your interpretation, um, you know, may, may, may um, be more important than mine as to who it is. Let's see what he wants you to know. Okay. He said, you don't take change lightly. Now, that's an interesting thing to say. I want to see where he's going with this. He said that whenever you're approaching a change in your life, in your career, in anything, you go through this whole analytical process and you weigh all the pluses and the minuses and the benefits. And he said that that is very good. He said, because you're one of those people who looks before you leap. And he says that that is a trait that you've kind of always had. And you need to continue doing that. And I'm getting something, some type of change or issue that he's focusing on within the Leo time frame. So Leo runs roughly from July 22 to August 22, um, give or take a day or so on either end. But um, something's coming up in the Leo time frame, and he's telling you to make sure that you approach it with this very analytical and careful um, analysis. Does that resonate with you at all? Yes, it does. And I do appreciate that advice. Okay, okay. Um, interesting, you've got three options that are happening. It's all related to the same thing. Is there some type of career thing coming up? Because it feels like there's three options he said, and you're going to be weighing one of them. You're just going to say, no, nope, that's not it. And then there's two of them you're very heavily going to consider. And then he said, then you'll come to the right conclusion. Um, actually, I've retired. So I've been trying to figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life. And that's probably what this is about. That's probably, <laughs> see, because all right, the way I get career doesn't necessarily mean career as right. in a job. 
But, you know, um, a lot of right. people when they retire are more busy than ever because, you know, maybe you're going to take up some yeah. type of a hobby or volunteer work or whatever. But within the Leo time frame, right. there's going to be three options. One of them, you're going to be like, eh. and then the other two, it's like, OK, but then you're going to go with that one. Okay. And it's well, interesting I keep feeling wind on my face. So that may involve something where you're outdoors quite a bit. That's very exciting. Yeah. I'll put it this way. Um, I'm not <laughs> seeing you sitting in a rocking chair and knitting. That is not going to happen. No, no, I'm not seeing that either. <laughs> and, and once again, I didn't mean well, to say you. stop, stop talking, but he came in like a lightning bolt. This guy didn't like no. messing around, okay? Yeah. And and the last thing no, I'm going to give you, I'll turn it over to Dr. Pat. He's holding yeah. up a sapphire, a sapphire. And a sapphire can indicate a piece of jewelry of significance that you may recognize with a sapphire in it or a significance to the month of September. First mm -hmm. has anniversaries or events within mm -hmm. September because sa sapphire okay. is September's That's... birthstone. Okay. Thank you. I, I'll have to pay attention for that. Okay. Hey, um, can you hear me? Okay. I just did something different with yes, my mic. Okay. Uh, here's what yes, I want to say. How recently is your retirement? Um, a year ago. Great. This is good because you've had a year. This is my sense. Yes. You know what you love to do. You know how you love to spend your time. I'm not even going to ask you what that is, but I want you to think about it. And then I don't want you to put any restriction. So if you are like, I love to go watch the water. That's what I want you to think about. Because a lot of what happens, especially after retired, I've retired twice. What happens is we have a structure, we have a format, but we have not given ourselves permission to really tap into what we love. And then we tap into it and we say, oh, but I'll never be able to enjoy that. So if you can take some time over the next, I'd say two to four weeks and really be mindful of the things that pop up for you that without a question you love and then get rid of the other part that says, well, that'll never happen. Okay, can you do that? Would you do that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and I love it because it's safe. There's no action for you to do. You're just going to hang out and say, oh, my gosh, I would be a professional softball boxer if I could. Right. So <laughs> go ahead and do that. Thank you for calling in. But please make sure you check back in with this. OK. And if you do call back in, say, Thank hey, you. yeah, this is so Jacob. Hey, this is me from Texas. And I want to give you a check in. Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate yeah. it. Bye. All right. yeah. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, see, I gave her two professions, softball and a boxer, like right in one <laughs> sentence. Like, what the heck is a softball boxer? Jacob, <laughs> yeah. yeah. next up, we've got Rebecca calling in from New York. Like, what the heck is a softball boxer? Jacob. <laughs> oh, hey, Re uh, Rebecca. Oh, that, it, it, turn that off. Hey, uh, Rebecca, yeah. how can we help you? Rebecca, you got to turn off your, your um, computer. Turn off your radio, speakers. Hey, Rebecca. You know, maybe we should go to another call. Well, let's go to the next caller until Rebecca, yeah. and you can tell Rebecca how to turn up yeah. her radio. Who, who's yeah, next? Yeah, for, for all the callers, turn your, your speakers, your radio, all that off. You should only have your phone on because as you can see, you immediately get feedback and we're not going to be able to talk to you and I'm not going to be able to connect to the other yeah. side because it's creating radio frequency interference, which yeah. um, blocks the connection to the other side. All right, so Jacob, who do we have next? We've got Roseanne from Florida. Hi, Roseanne, welcome. Hi, Hi. thank what you for we... taking my call. Yeah, what can we do for I... you? I was hoping you could touch on a subject of when pets die and do they ever come back to you, like in a different form, like reincarnated. Oh, great. Mark? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, who comes back? I didn't hear that part. Did you say yes? I, she would like us to talk about what happens when pets, our pets, our animal friends die. Sure. And then do they come back in another form? That's a great question. Well, pets have souls. And anything have that is anything that is alive has an electromagnetic soul, which is one of the concepts that I explain in the afterlife frequency. And a lot of people, um, 
you know, want to know if, you know, their particular pet is going to immediately come back to them in a form of another animal, you know. Um, I don't believe in the transmigration of souls. And what that means is, if you're a dog, you're going to be a dog. If you're a human, you're going to be a human. If you're a, a porpoise, you're going to be a porpoise. So it's entirely possible that a pet is going to come back, is going to reincarnate, but will they come back to you? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. So there's no definitive answer on that. And of course, you know, we love our four-legged friends very much and we want them to come back to us, but perhaps they have done what they needed to do with their connection with you. And maybe your connection with them is done and it's time for them to move on to, to someone else or even to another plane of existence. So um, it's, it's a great question and it's a very complex answer. Well, my daughter lost her two cats very recently, and she's so brokenhearted, and she can't seem to get past it. And well, she's just grieving so much for these kitties. Well, the loss of a pet is very, very significant. You know, a lot of people, ah, it's just a cat. It's like, well, no. Uh, the, these animals brought tremendous amount of love, but they also taught your daughter incredible many lessons, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Pat uh, as well, but part of the lessons is love and, and grief, and grief, and I'm quoting Father Sonny again tonight, um, Father Sonny told me that grief is the price of love, for oh. we grieve as deeply as we have loved. And then he said, but Mark, a life without love isn't much of a life at all. And so it's very painful what your daughter's going through, but she's also learning about how complex love actually is. Mark, Doctor. my daughter's going to talk to you right now. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Hi, Mark. Um, so... Both of these cats I had for a long time, and I loved them so, so much. But um, one of them in particular was like a familiar to me. I, I don't know if, if that sounds weird, but um, they, they uh, say uh, that, you know, sometimes animals can be your familiar. Yeah, you know, I, I hear stuff like that, and I don't discount it. And it doesn't sound weird because, you know, I talk to dead people. So, you know, weird's kind of my life. Um <laughs> Um, but the thing is, perhaps that being lived out its life with you, and it's time for you to now move forward and not be fixated on, on that relationship. Because relationships, whether they're human or with animals, we get they, when somebody that we love or a being that we love dies, our relationship goes from one of a physical nature to one of a spiritual nature. And by holding on to the physical and saying, well, that being's on my familiar and that cat's always going to be with me and that cat's going to reincarnate as, you know, Pookie the cat or whatever. I think what you're doing is you're creating a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself. Um, so, so, you know, as Father Sonny also told me, let go, let God, let go, let God. And you have to realize yeah. that your relationship has gone from one of a physical to one of a spiritual. Dr. Pat, what, what do you just, think? It's just when when he came, it was I don't know, I don't want to use like a you know, a generic term like magical, but it really was. I mean, this one cat showed up outside my house and, you know, was inseparable with me. I mean, he was like a little dog in the body exactly. of a cat. Yeah. And he yeah. He he loved me unconditionally. He used to walk at my side. I mean yeah, well, you bonded. Yeah, you, you, you bonded. I, you know, and you know, maybe, maybe you guys have been through an existence together before, and maybe this this time was tying things up. You know, there's no easy answers to reincarnation. I mean, people that believe in it, Hindus yeah. and Buddhists and Jains, have been studying this for thousands of years, and so there, there's no easy answers. And and the, the hard, cold reality just, is it hurts when someone or some being that we love dies. You know, it just, it, it, it just feels like more than that. Like, 
I, I I can't move forward because I feel like he's going to come back. Like I just have this feeling that he's coming back. He he passed away uh, eight months ago, and it was completely unexpected. He he died very quickly from bone cancer, and and he never had any issues before. And it's just you know he he left so suddenly, and and I don't think our time was done. So I. I, I'm telling you, I have this strange feeling like he's coming back and he's waiting for me. Like, I think he's here now. I just haven't found him yet. Okay. I sound, Dr. I sound crazy, Dr. but, I, I, you know, it's, it's the feeling that I have. I, I don't think we're done yet. Okay. Um, I mean, what would you have me say? You know, I can't tell you, oh, your cat's coming back. You have a right to your feelings. And yeah. perhaps you're right about this. Or yeah. perhaps you need to learn to let go. Well, can I jump in? Um, so you can live with one foot in both places. Are you open to hearing how that could happen? I'm sorry, say that one more time. You can have both. Are you open to hearing how that, that could happen? Yes. Definitely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So I had a similar thing with a cat and I'm not a cat person, but she adopted me. Uh, and also just like yeah. you very sudden, but here's one of the things that will help you. When we hold on to attachment and what would I mean by that? The attachment really that's operating right here, just from this few minutes, by the way, is the attachment that we're not done yet. And if you're not yeah. done yet, but, but, but here's really the cool thing. If you're not done yet, what that means is there's no energy for them to come back. Right? Yeah. So if you're not done, if, if you have a plate of food and you're staring at the plate of food and there's nothing coming off the plate of food, even if you want another help into that pasta, you either have to pile it on but consciously and emotionally, there's no room for either one of you. And so what I'm trying to say is in order for, for any energies to move and move ahead, when we are attached and attached to an outcome or attached to an idea, there's no room for it. You see what I mean? Yeah. And you can, yeah. still, you can I still love her or you can still be in love and you could still feel, well, maybe we're not done yet, but then add on to the sentence, maybe we're not done yet. And I would love, and I would love, maybe we're not done yet. And I would love to see how you might return so that we can do part two. You see the difference? Definitely. And, and I want to, it's just, I just, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten any signs that it's the right time. I, I've been looking everywhere. Yeah, this and, is a sign. You know, no, no. Yeah, you, you got to stop you doing that. into the show. Yeah. We're giving you the sign. <laughs> Give me a sign. You're, you're trying too hard. <laughs> okay. you're, this you're is trying, the sign. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, Dr. Pat's absolutely right. You're trying too hard. Um, if you read my book, The Afterlife Frequency, um, it goes into recognizing, accepting, feeling, and trusting messages from spirits. And there's a lot of people that I want a spiritual experience and I want it now. And it's like, it doesn't <laughs> work that way. Okay. And it's once again, yeah. let go, let God stop putting all that angst into it. That being came into this life. There's a day we're going to be born a day. Mm -hmm. We're going to go out. And that was the day that that cat was supposed to transition. And you have to accept that. And that may be the life lesson that you're learning from this, that no matter how much we love someone or something, there's things beyond our control. Yeah. And this is a lot about control yeah. by yeah. letting go of that. Because here's the thing. Can this I being, ask you? This being knows that you. Well, we actually her. have to go. Okay. Amar, yeah, we, I have to, we have to oh. go. Actually, we're out of time. But imagine yourself in this. Imagine yourself. Last thought in a smoke-filled room and you're looking for oxygen, you can't get it. Until the smoke is removed, you won't be able to get clean air. Mark, thank you for a great well, show. You thank you all for cooling oh, in, tuning us in and turning us on. Jacob, thank you for doing a fantastic job. And Mark and I will be back next week 
all of you out there figure out what B is in your bonnet. We'll see you next time. All right. Can I Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Doc with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife extraordinary problems yeah they do they require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the doc that's every thursday 4 p.m pacific time 7 p.m eastern time right here on transformationtalkradio.com that's transformationtalkradio.com and don't forget we're also live face to face on facebook.com transformation talk radio